Welcome to the Heron Heads Podcast. My name is Julio, and I'm joined today by some friends and fellow Inter Miami fans, Dave, Chris, and Jose. And on behalf of the guys, we want to thank you for joining us for episode 13 here on the Heron Heads Podcast, your first stop for all things Inter Miami. For those of you watching on YouTube, thanks for stopping by, and make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoy the show. Before we begin, we'd like to take a minute to thank our supporters on Patreon. Shout out to Art, Brian, Kevin, and James. Thank you so much for your support. If you feel so inclined to support us on Patreon, you will find a link in the description wherever you are listening. And if you don't feel so inclined, that's totally okay too. We appreciate you being here. So we're less than 24 hours removed from that slog 0-0 match, and I'm kind of happy that we're already looking ahead towards LAFC because now we get a chance to just shake off the ick from yesterday, and we can just look ahead to what's going to be a difficult match, I think. But... Dave, how are you feeling now that you've had a chance to digest that Nashville match? Yeah, I mentioned it last episode. I was I was ready to move on to to LA immediately. Uh, I did think we 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 learned stuff in that last match. It's not like we took nothing away from it. Uh, I believe that most teams are going to play that way against us. Just try to slog it down, put up everybody in the box, and and make us kind of work over them. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen this time around we'll talk about it when we're, when we're talking about the keys of the game and stuff like that but i feel better because again we're a day removed and we're we're moving on yeah i'm glad that's behind us it, we couldn't we couldn't get another episode in fast enough it was the energy wasn't there yesterday even though it was, we didn't lose we got our point it was a tie but it just wasn't there so i'm glad that's behind us we're looking forward to la it's going to be a high-flying match, a lot of fireworks going on, um, two very good offenses. Um, so we'll see. I, th- I think it's going to be a, a one for the ages, that's for sure. Ages. Um, no, I, I'm, ages. I'm, I'm, I am happy. I am happy that it's over. Um, it's We're lucky we, we left with one point. Um, we needed three, but you, you get what you get. You don't, you don't complain. But one, one thing that I'm, I'm sad about, is that on my personal power ranking record books, um, we're no longer one through five. We are now just one through four. It's tough. I don't know how we're ever going to rebound. Without that. you, <laughs> that's that's very tough. I'll notify the boys, lose, and I'm sure they'll come out. Jose, it's uh, you get what you get, and you don't get upset, buddy. You missed it. You were so what close. Did I say? You're so close. You said you get what you get. And you don't get up. And I don't know what you said. And you don't complain. <laughs> yeah, you don't complain. So close. so close. Good try, though. He's not a rapper, guys. He's not a rapper. Come on, give him some slack. So, Inter Miami is going to travel cross country, a big talking point leading up to Messi's arrival in MLS. And I'm sure it's going to be a lot of the discourse heading into the LAFC match. Um, I don't, I, I heard some people talking today. Question questioning if Messi and Busquets and some of these guys even travel with the team. I thought that was just an asinine thing to say. I they're they're gonna play. They're gonna play. They're not gonna miss this chance to to come up against a really good team. It doesn't carry as much weight as some of these other matches that we have with the rest of the season because it's a Western Conference opponent. But we need points no matter where they come from. It's not a double whammy because it's not an Eastern Conference team, but otherwise. We, we we need points. So yeah. I'm 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 done with Nashville. I don't I don't even want to acknowledge that that game ever happened again. So let's talk about LAFC. Super explosive, dynamic team, very well put together. They have, I mean, just top to bottom names that you'll recognize because they've been kind of the standard now in the MLS for a few years. Carlos Vela is always one of the top performers so long as he's on the pitch. Uh, you have Chiellini, who came over, and he's just a stalwart in defense. You have McCarty, who's on uh, between the sticks, McCarthy. And then, um, yeah, I mean, like, they, they're just, they're such a well-composed team. They're one of the best defensive teams and one of the best offensive teams. So it's going to be, like you said, it's going to be fireworks and I'm I'm excited. It, we're gonna have to wait up till 10 p.m. to watch it, and then we're gonna have to wait up later to do our post match reaction. But I'm really looking forward to to that whole experience, to be honest. Yeah, I'm gonna have a cafecito ready because that's gonna be rough. We're looking at 10 p.m. start, maybe 12. 12 Imagine if it goes to pens. <laughs> Imagine that. 
<laughs> I would never think of that. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. Yeah, like, you said, first, 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 first. <laughs> like you said, Julio, it's it's gonna be an explosive match. There's there's a lot of attacking that's gonna be going on. They got some very explosive players, Buonga, Vela, and then their new addition as strikers, Mario Gonzalez. He's only played two matches, but he's done a very good job in those two matches. Um, so up them three up front is our defense is going to have some work to do. That's for sure. Um, it's it's going to be a constant battle, constant attack. Very, uh, it's it's a little different than what we've seen. Probably it's they do a lot of inside passes in the box. They're very like uh, tic tac toe, and and then they shoot. It's it's not so much of this uh, long balls that we've been seeing uh, a lot of these uh, counters. So it's going to be a little different. Um, I think our defense is really going to have to step up. I really want to see Toto again and obviously come on Miller after that monster game he had against Nashville. Um, it's weird. We haven't seen Kristoff. I don't know why they didn't play him, why he wasn't even in that lineup last time. Um, I'm curious to see if he's going to be at least a sub this match or maybe starting. Um, but I really want to see those two start. Come on. And Toto, I think they'll be able to keep up as far as speed goes. They'll be able to keep up with these guys up front. Yeah. I want to see Kromaski start the game. I, think I, I can't. Doing solid. I can't. I can't have mm-hmm. Kromaski come off the off the bench anymore. I wanna. I wanna be able to score quickly, and I think he he brings that that dynamic to us to our to our team. We can't. We can't be messing around. Um, I know that that this isn't an Eastern Conference match, but we want to be able to pick up those three points, and we don't have a chance if we don't score. This team will be able to put up points on us, and. I don't believe they're gonna they're gonna slog it down. So I I think we'll have chances to score. Uh, they do have an established defense, so they don't have to just use everybody back in defense. They they can kind of play their 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 game against us and and hope to out out punch us. Um, I do think it's in- interesting that they have so many players that have experience against Messi. Um, Chiellini's played him in the Champions League and actually went through. Uh, Messi's team in the Champions League, I think it was in 2017, where they 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 beat they beat Barcelona three 0 and then in the the second match they 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 came out with a draw, so they played twice against Messi's Barcelona and and kept them off the sheet, and um, and then you have Buongo who played I think one season with with a uh, Serie A I think it was Saint Etienne and I think he he got the lone goal in that game for for his team, granted. Messi did get the three assists that got them the win, uh, but he does have experience playing against against Messi. And then you have Vela, who who did play a little bit in in La Liga, and he he had there. I think he played for Real Sociedad, and they had they had a decent record against against Messi as well. Not a winning record, but a respectable one. So it's not you have a bunch of players that they're 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 not going to be starstruck with Messi on the pitch. So they'll be able just how how our players look at Busquets and they look at Alba to kind of calm them down. There'll be plenty of players on that LAFC team that'll look to their stars to calm them down as well. So I think this is going to be a true slugfest, and we're gonna get we're gonna get a good a good match out of it. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna yeah, say the I same mean, thing. I, I think... Go ahead, Jose. Yeah, I, I think that we need to do what Charlotte did. That they gave us they they're giving us the recipe to beat them. Uh, their last match that they had high possession, they had 63% possession against them. That's that's our game. That's that's more or less what, what we, we try to do. Um, if we were if we're able to do that, we, we don't get a lot of shots on target. That's not the way we play. We try to get very very good shots on target um, with higher xG. Um, this team this team I, I I know they're the second best defense in, in the MLS, but I I also think that when they're trying to get ahead and they're trying to score as, as often as they are and they're constantly putting shots on target. And, and you know, what is it, Chris? Was it 5.63 for the year um, per game? We were talking about it before. I mean, it's, it's, it's extremely high considering the M- the MLS, you know, the, you don't really see that very often. Usually we're known for our offense, but they're, they're, they're very good at what they do. Uh, we, we need to make sure that we, we put Bonga in, in the Mukhtar Doghouse. We need to make sure that we do exactly what we did to uh, to Mukhtar to him. Uh, Vela, Vela is extremely good. We need, we need to do the same thing to him. I don't, I don't care. Uh, put Kamal Murder, Murder, I'm six, take him, and let's go. Everybody goes to the doghouse. Everyone in the doghouse. Everybody. Everyone in the doghouse. 
The move to, yeah, that's, that's sponsored. That's <laughs> Yeah, so I was going to echo Dave's sentiments about I, I don't think anyone on this LAFC team is going to be starstruck, phased at all that Inter Miami is coming in, that Messi is coming in, Busquets, whoever, whether they start, whether they come off the bench, I don't think it's going to be any different than any other team that strolls in there. LAFC is not afraid of anybody that is put in front of them. They have CONCACAF Champions Cup experience. They have international experience. I don't think they care who's on the opposite side of the pitch. They're going to come out and they're going to ball. So I, I'm excited. I think I think I think this is going to be one of the more fun games because, although LAFC is very defensively sound, they 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 play openly. Like they're not sitting back like Nashville was. Like Nashville is built on their defense and it provides offensive opportunities. LAFC is an offensive team that has a very solid defense. So I think we're going to see a much more open match, which is very exciting for the way we play and the way our players find more joy on the pitch i think the interplays that we always talk about i think those opportunities are going to be there it's just going to be a matter of can we break them down in the final third and get past the defense that's been so stout and create enough opportunities that we get a couple to hit the back of the net because i do think one will certainly not be enough in this match absolutely not definitely need three or four Three or four. Is that maybe a little yeah. teaser for, for yeah, later? Little, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I like it. So, yeah, I mean, LAFC can beat you in a million different ways, it feels. They can they can just shut you out and just put one past you. They can outscore you. I, I think it's going to be so interesting to see some of the rotation that Tata has to, has to do. I think I'm over the Gomez experiment. He's been playing better, but I agree. I think Kramaski has to be out there in the starting eleven. I, I don't know if Taylor gets a start again over Farias. I think Farias is way more dynamic, provides a lot more. Um, I'm very happy with the defense. We'll see if Aviles continues to start over Kristoff. I, I also don't know why Kristoff is just not even on the reserves, whether it's an agreement with the Ukrainian national team and they're kind of just resting him because he has some big international fixtures coming up. I'm not sure. Maybe we're just stretching out Aviles' legs and, and seeing what he can do. But, um, yeah, I think I think – getting that team sheet and seeing who's out there on the pitch is such a key component of this because I think that factors in tremendously into this. I'm, I don't know if we're going to be able to hold so much possession against LAFC. I don't know if we're going to get to that 58, 59, 60% threshold that we've been seeing. We certainly won't get 70% like we did against Nashville. I, I don't think I would be I shocked, so. But I, yeah, I, I find like those little nuances of this game are going to be really interesting to keep an eye on. Yeah, uh, just Charlotte to kind of um, go ahead. The Charlotte did it. I mean, they can do it. They, they we, we, you know, we, we put it to them. We can do. You know, it's just a matter of can can we move the ball around enough or around their around Kalini and these guys. That's to the defense. Yeah, just um to mimic a little bit what David was saying, I think we have to start off hot. We, we got to come out. I think we got to – I hope that that puts our, our best attackers out there. Um, I don't think we've seen this, the, the front three being uh, Messi, Campana, and Farias yet, right? That will be something I'd love to see. Will he do it? I don't know. Um, and then with Benha somehow in the attacking mid, facilitating that a little bit. Um, because he seems to have really good chemistry up there with them. Uh, so I, I think that'll be our best, at least as far as attacking goes, that'll be our best bet. Like you said, Gomez, I like him coming off as a sub later on once we're kind of trying to slow the game down, um, park the bus. But, yeah, I, we need to start off strong. We need to get those goals in early and often. I think I think that, yeah, we, we definitely haven't seen Faku, Campana, and, and Messi to start a, to start a match. That, that hasn't happened yet. But yeah, I'm really hoping that that's that's the front three that we're, that we're starting to see for this for this match, and I think they can start Gomez as long as it's alongside Kramaski. They they can't, yeah, they just cannot keep him on the bench. So you're taking out Arroyo or Busquets? I'll take out Arroyo. I think Arroyo Arroyo can use can use a uh, the breather. Um, and Diego Diego's uh he's a little younger, so it's that's okay. Uh, but. It's. I think. I think you can start off with Kramaski and and Gomez in the mid, and then Busquets drop behind, and then you have your your usual suspects in the back. But, but you, you. I don't think there's any way that you can get away with not putting Kramaski in the starting lineup. And 
and you want to see what Farias can start, can get going with the start and see if he can build a little consistency. I was, I was reading one of the the comments. I'm not sure if it was on on Twitter or on or on YouTube, and and they and they stressed discipline that we have to give certain assignments to some players and not have them float around, which is what we've seen with Faku and we've seen it with Taylor. If Tata can give instructions and have Faku say, hey, you're playing left wing, you're going to create off of left wing, let's go. It'll be easier for him to focus and, and then it'll be easier for everybody to know where everybody is and you can create off of that. Once you start floating guys around, it complicates things and, there's, and I don't think that everybody's been in the system long enough to get to that complicated level. Uh, maybe down the line it'll be okay, but right now we got to simplify it. Yeah, I. as far as who I'm looking for specifically to do things, I mean, as always, I'm dying for Campana to start. So I would love for him to start, and we can see what an actual striker looks like against a very composed defense, a very structured and organized defense. And I, our defense is going to have to play as well as they did against Nashville. The difference is Nashville was just in small little spurts. I think we're – I think – I think possession is going to be close to 50-50, and it may be the first game that we have less possession than the opposition. And it's not going to be like, oh, we have less possession and they weren't really doing much. It's going to be like whenever LAFC have the ball, it's going to be danger. So I want to see like a full 90 minutes of good defense because we're starting to see the defense play better. I want to see if they can sustain that for a full 90 minutes of, of just constant pressure coming at them rather than the small little th- moments that we saw against Nashville where Kamal Miller was excellent. Yedlin cut off a play really well. And then David Ruiz fouled. But then like, I want to see that consistency spread across an entire match. I think that's going to be, so- I mean, obviously it's going to be so important to stop LAFC from just crushing us and, and just out, out scoring us, even though we might be able to put a couple past. I, I think it's going to be so key for the defense to have their best game that we've seen since Messi has joined. Uh, and I'm you also said looking this, at. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say yeah, you said discipline like, oh, also on the uh, on the attacking side. Uh, that defense needs to be disciplined too, because those attackers up there they they can make them look like fools. Honestly, with the speed, with the moves that they have, they need to be disciplined back there as well. I, I was gonna look at whether Alba was actually gonna even start to, in this in this match. Last game we we all talked about it in the, in the last episode that. He, he, he was really lackluster. It was one of those things where he was just not not giving us much. Um, it, it pains me to say it, but it's just one of those things that these guys need some rest. And we, we maybe we bring him on like we did Messi the other day when when we gave him a little rest. We put him in the 60th minute. And maybe he makes a big difference. But we we need to start looking towards these guys. Of, hey, maybe maybe we need to give some of these guys some rest. Maybe this is the game to do it. We're traveling all the way out west. Um, it's, it, it, it may, we may have to pack it in anyways, you know, this might be the game to just get, give it away. You know, they're not, they're never going to say right. But it's one of those things that if, if when the starting 11 comes up and we don't see out, but there, and all of a sudden Sergio's not playing either, you know, <laughs> it says a lot. I don't think there's, are a- we going to trust Noah Allen starting out there with this attack? The thing, the thing is, if if you're not starting Alba, you're not you're not playing your normal formation. You're going to be playing five back, and I don't think that's the best route to go uh, to score quick goals if you're playing five back. We don't. I don't think we have the personnel to do it. No, with anybody who can, I don't. We can't put Sim Messi. We can't sit uh, Alba, and if we sit Sergio, we could probably get away with it. But when he's when he's at his best, we're at our best. So it, it, can we really? In, in the world of benching one person, can we bench anybody? Really, not really. Like any of those big three, if we bench them, we're 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 taking a huge step down. But but these guys are also human. Alba did not look good. So okay, is is him not looking good? Noah Allen, I don't know. <laughs> but Noah Allen didn't play that bad in the last game. Again, but he, we didn't he, ask when, Noah when Allen to do the things that we would be asking Alba to do. So yeah, he didn't. He played. He also he played center back. So it's not. They played very different positions. Um, I no, think they, it's, he played left. They put him in at left center back. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, in that game, but so they had back. taken they, they had put him in at left back in another game and he didn't do bad. That was like but a three minute that was like a three minute yeah. substitution at the end of the game. Yeah, well they didn't they, they, they before, won their offense through like, their wing backs. Before Jordy got here, we were crying about how bad New Island was. I was. Yes. But but I'm not ready to trust them against LAFC to start. I, I understand what you're saying, Jose, that, that Jordi Alba is human and is fatigued and is playing as much as anybody on this team. And he's going to eventually need to rest regardless. But, yeah, I think I think if we're looking to to games to, to mess with stuff, it's when we know we're going to be down messy. Like, when we know we're going to be down other pieces and it's like, okay, well, we're going to tinker anyways. Let's, let's just let's go for it and just tinker mm-hmm. fully and then bring Alba on as a sub. I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I look at – just like I looked at the Nashville game, I look at this game as one of the last opportunities that we have everyone at our disposal. And even if we overexert certain players for the match against Kansas City that we're going to be even more shorthanded, Kansas City is a much more attainable matchup than LAFC. I think LAFC, we're going to have to have our best 11 if we really want to go and get three points. Not just one point, three points. Yeah, and you're talking about the standing. Like LAFC is what the, the number three team in the West, number two team in the West. I, I saw that they're the number three best home home team in all of the MLS. That's we're, we're going into a, a Lions den, and we're not fully equipped to handle the line. To be honest, uh, we're all we've very heard tired. This before um, we've heard this before. Out. We've gone into we've gone we've into very very competitive home environments before, and and it's been the same thing. Oh, we're going into the Hornets' nest. We're going we're going into Philly. We're going into Charlotte. These are these are tough places to play. We're going to Cincinnati. And we've come on on top, and it's the same. It's the same group of guys too. I understand that they're fatigued, but they're also professionals, and and you expect them to to still perform at a, at a certain level. And I I don't think that 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 should be something that should put too much fear in, into our into our minds. I think if we know that players like Alba and Busquets are tired, I think you still start them, and maybe you sub them off earlier than you normally would. Maybe you sub them off after forty five minutes, but you have to start. Pedal to the metal. We have to get after this game. I'm, I'm going to pose a question. Um, so just I want to I want to know what you guys are saying. Okay, so when we're playing LAFC now, would you say those other times that we're going to Hornets Nest, like when we went to Nashville, when we went to Philly, when they were pleading, "Don't sell our tickets," and we went there and we kicked some butt, right? Would you say that we're in the same form? going into those games as we're going into this game? Because I don't think so. I don't think we're playing at our top form right now. Well, we've, just, been, playing general, tougher, maybe. we've been playing tougher well, tougher opponents. It's not an in-form issue. It's also where we have more experience now playing with each other. We have more knowledge of what works. So if anything, I say that we're better off going into this game than some of those other games where we're still trying to figure out what works. We know who plays well off of each other. Like, how many times are we saying we have to start Campana, put Campana in because it opens up the crosses from the outside, put in Kramaski because we know he can attack much better than, than Gomez and Alba. Back then, we're still trying to figure out who to put in. We, I think we're in a better pos- uh, position right now just because, just because we know what we have. Yeah, and I think we're playing just the, the, the type of team that we're playing now. Those other teams that you mentioned – they they grinded us down on defense. This this is this seems like something different. This seems like it, like we said. I think there's going to be fireworks. I think it's going to be a back and forth um, on the attack. Obviously, their defense is good. Not not just throwing them away, but it's not the same type of defense that we saw in Nashville or that we saw in Cincinnati. It's it's different. It's different. It's going to be a different style of match on on Sunday. And as far as individual form goes, too, I think you look at. The defense, like heading into Philly, our defense was a huge question. Since then, they've all played better. doesn't matter who's been back there. They've played better. Calendar is continued to play better every single match, even though he was already playing at a high level. And then Gomez has been playing better. You have Arroyo, who's been very steady. Busquets has been kind of wishy-washy, not like overly impressed with him, but he's like his floor is still very high for our team. So I would say form wise, there's only a couple pieces that you're you would say, okay, like we don't really know what's going on with Taylor. We don't know like Fadias Taylor, 
like, are they going to bring it every single match? We've seen flashes from Fadi Ass. We've seen flashes from Taylor, but we've also seen, like, really bad moments from Taylor. And then the striker, that that just is super indecisive and won't start Campana for every single match. So you don't know who's going to start. I would say Joseph's been on the same exact form that he was heading into the Philly match, for example, and then he came out and scored a goal in the third minute. And then if Campana starts, I, I would I would say that he's in good form based on his recent playtime. And then Messi's Messi, like you're not going to question his form because it's just a different stratosphere. Yeah. But I would say individual form-wise too, we're in a much better position than we were in, in those matches in the League's Cup for sure. Okay. I, I if, the way the way I see it, I just felt I, I just I've never seen flashes like I did when we were going through the League's Cup. I, I saw us running through people, and they were very good. Not you know, in in the last few games, I, I felt like we we're a little ha- hapless. No one knew what we were going to be. No one knew what, what what to expect. Now people understand a little bit better, at least what to expect. They were still figuring out. Okay, do we need to all surround Messi? Do we need to go attack Busquets? Now people are understanding. Stop Busquets. You stop the pivot. Stop. You know Alba from getting so much freedom on the wings and force him to go on Yedlin's side. Like teams are understanding better what to do against us, so they're able to plan more. There's there's a bigger sample size of this team as it's composed right now for coaches to base their their game plans off of. I think back then, a lot of teams were caught in a sense, off guard with what Miami was even going to do. What are Tata's tactics going to look like? Because the League's Cup was the first time that any of those pieces were were all working together towards the same goals. So, I and think... we're constantly putting in young guys too now, right? Yeah. I mean, we're mixing it's in a- we're mixing in a lot of players because those pieces were, were completely new too. And to Julio's point, that helps mm-hmm. with form as well. They, they've been rotating, and and the guys are a little, a little, a little fresher. You know, those young guys. First of all, the young guys could go longer, right? And then, second of all, they just it's a constant rotation, so it is going to help the form. I know you're focused on on Jordy, obviously, but but the rest of the team is they they've been doing a, a nice rotation. Hey, Sergio, Sergio too. I haven't been impressed with him lately. Just the last few matches, it's felt he, I didn't even notice he was there. He should have more room to work in this match. Yeah, I think his impact has been very limited by the style of defense that has been presented in front of him. I think he, like Messi, we saw unlocking Nashville. Sergio was kind of just being almost used as as like just very basic, like receive the ball, pass the ball, don't lose the ball. It wasn't he wasn't able to turn and be overly creative. It was very fundamental. It was like get the ball, maybe dribble around one person just to open up a passing lane and then get the ball out of your feet so that the ball's not taken off of you by their press and it causes a counterattack. It was just very very safe in a way. I would hope that he impacts the game more on Sunday, but I guess we'll 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 see if that happens. So other than, well, I, oh, I guess, who are you guys looking at LAFC, right? Because they have just a, a, an arsenal of, of people that you can pinpoint. Who are you guys looking for on LAFC as, as your kind of focus as we head into this match? I have two. I mean, one that I know for sure will be on there is Boanga. I, I'm really interested in seeing how, how he shows up and, and how, we, how we can kind of get him off of his game. I think he's what the third third best goal scorer in the MLS this season. Um and then one it's I haven't seen him play the last few few matches but Diego Palacios he's uh he's a very good defender for for LAFC and I haven't seen him play. I think he was down either injury or illness. I wonder if if they if they deploy him out against uh against us because that would be something that would be interesting because then they'll have their full assortment of defenders if if he's available for them. Yeah, I think a big X factor, I already mentioned him a little earlier, is um Mario Gonzalez. He's only played two matches. Um, but he 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 hit he how, how do you say hit the gate running or whatever the saying is? Hit the ground he, running. Uh, hit the ground running. <laughs> I was thinking of a yeah. horse race, open the gates and go. Listen, That's what I you was... get what you get and you don't <laughs> complain. 
obviously we're not very good with our little sayings, right? So, but yeah, Mario Gonzalez, he seems really interesting. He might be an X factor in this match. We've spoken about the two outside guys, but um, he's new. Maybe, maybe we, we haven't seen him or the team hasn't seen him play with these guys much. So I think he's a big X factor going forward um, and something that our defense is going to have to mess with a little bit. I'm looking at Carlos Vela. I, I think he's the engine that, that helps that team go. Um, every time I saw I saw them on film, it was just constantly Vela was somewhere in that in that just small small ball, just just passing it around, passing it around, and it very unselfish team um, stuff that I was watching us do in the last in the last match was annoying me. Where we, we would just start shooting and and we just didn't let plays develop. Vela is is that guy he just consistently is letting plays develop passing to him passing to him going to go, going and pitching it around and that's and that's what makes them who they are uh, i think he's an x factor uh, obviously we, we all we all talk about the, the mr 99 right number 99 um he's he's a, he's a he's a badass but ultimately we you know i think we stop vela and and and, and we'll stop uh, we'll stop the team we'll stop let's see 99 being Bowanga for those who don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 gonna look at the defense. I'm gonna look at the defense of LAFC because they're uh, we don't granted watch a lot of LAFC. We, Inter Miami's only played them twice ever, so we don't get to see a lot of LAFC because they play late and we don't play them often. So other than them being really good and active in the playoffs, we normally don't tune in. But I'm interested to see. They're, they're so good defensively. Why? What is it that they're doing, and how is it that our attackers are going to <clears throat> excuse me, get by them and, and put them under pressure? I want to see, see what makes them so good because it's not like LAFC is, is having tons of possession every game. They seem to be just very you know level, low 50%. So I, I, I'm really interested to see... What makes them so good? They obviously have some fantastic defenders back there. Aaron Long. Uh, they have Palacio, like you were saying. They have Chiellini. They have Hollingshead. I'm, I'm just so interested to see what makes them tick. And I want to see how our attackers attack that. I'm, I'm, I think there's going to be so many like small little games within the game. And it's going to be fun. It's gonna be a, a tactic, a tactician's dream. But honestly, this game is, is it's gonna go. It's gonna come down to tactics because both teams have key pieces up and down the roster. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see how Tata and and LAFC's coach, which his name is slipping my mind, it, how they how they move around their their chest. Trundolo. True. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> All right. yeah. So so now that we've kind of gone through who we're looking for, what we're expecting. What do we think for score? I'm I'm interested to see what everyone says because I feel like we're going to get for the first time some mixed results here. Will there be pens? <coughs> no pens this time. Promise. Um, I'm saying I'm going 4-3. Miami wins it. 4-3. They're going to hit the ground running. They're going to score... Two in the first and then two early in the first, early in the first, and then two more second. Um, and we're going to win it. We're going to go in there. Everyone's going to be talking about Messi traveling, all that garbage. He's going to go in there. He's going to score two goals. And we're going to come out with that W. We're going to get those three points that we desperately need before all these uh, international matches start. I'm going to say... Hmm. Man, this is tough. I'm gonna I'm gonna say three, three one. I think we're gonna hold up. I, I think it's gonna be extremely tough for us to hold them to this the one goal, but I think we're gonna play with a little a little fire underneath us because of what we what we dealt with in this last match, and I think they're gonna they're gonna hold off. And I think uh, I think we'll pull off a three one. And I'm not gonna do messy hat trick like I I want to do it so bad, but I I want to see a Kramaski go. And I want to see a Facundo Farias goal. That would be some goal talk. If he's able to get a hat trick in this game, that would be something. But that's not what's, what I'm predicting at all. Um, I'm thinking we're going to go out west. I think we're, we're, we're going to be dragging ass. I think um, 
we're going to do a little bit more of what we just uh, witnessed in uh, Nashville. And um, and I think we're going to lose 3-2. That's, that's, what, that's what I think is going to happen. Cocky so, Miami, Miami fan has exited the chat. Never to return. I don't want to hear him again. From you. Right, well, well I'm gonna... win, you're going to hear <laughs> Classic Miami been... fan. That, that is actually classic Miami <laughs> fan. <laughs> I don't know if you're new to this, but if we win, we're supposed to go, if they lose, we're supposed to go, oh, no. Life is bad. Everything is going down. So the team... <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go the flip side of Jose. I think we win three two. I do think it's gonna be a shootout. I think it's gonna be tied most of this match. It's gonna be just back and forth. Like one team takes the lead, other team ties. That other team takes the lead, the other team comes back and ties, and then it's gonna be like just just a wild west shootout. So I think we win three two. I think Campana, of course, gets on the scoreboard. I think Messi scores a brace or nets a brace. And we come back and brace ourselves for the international breaks that follow for all these players. But we'll come back happy because we're going to take three points from L.A. Against all odds. <laughs> so at so least funny. we all said that we were going to score. So with that said, what time are we going to score our first goal? I said we're scoring early. Hit the ground running. We're going to score at uh, seven minutes. How about you? How about you, Jose? I'm predicting in, in uh, eight, 18 minutes. Do we score first, or is it, or is it LA? <laughs> LA scores first. <laughs> That's the worst. Fall it apart. <laughs> Miami scores in the 15th minute. I'm going to go Miami in the 28th minute. And I'm saying it's Bella. Bella comes, and he does the Ronaldo... And then Messi scores two more. Get out of here. Oh, oh yeah, I'm telling you what's going to happen. If it happens, it happens. Great. Well, whatever happens, we'll be there after the match to break it all down. We're going to go live again on YouTube, so please join us. We'll, we'll try to go uh, live quickly after the match, but we'll collect our thoughts for a little bit and then hop on over. So um, if you're not already subscribed, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you know when we're live, when we post new videos. Thank you so much for joining us on the Heron Heads podcast, your first place for all things Inter Miami. And we hope to catch you next time. Enjoy the match. Yeah.